Hey guys, welcome to Collider Movie Talk, movie talk for movie fans. I'm your host, Ashley Mova, and this is The Daily Show, where we give you all the latest news from the world of movies, plus some insight into what it all means. Leading off the show today is John Campia. Well, greetings and salutations, everybody. Welcome to the best damn movie-related show on the planet Earth, coming to you from right here at the Collider Video Studios here in Burbank, California. And we are so glad you decided to make this part of your day. <laughs> also here, Christian Harloff. This is why I didn't want to watch this stupid game. Uh, I'll tell you what, and it, and it wasn't just because, uh, obviously, who was playing in it. It's at the end, and I tweeted it out, and I said, the fact that I actually had to give respect to that team because that's how you win championships. I hate them, but I have to get, and, and Brady, I still think, is the best of all time, but I hate them. It also made me realize that I will never hate anyone more than the Cowboys. <laughs> Also here, Jeremy Johns. Funny thing is that usually the, the commercials and the trailers, the commercials are the coolest part about the Super Bowl. Now, that second half was the coolest thing I'd seen in the Super Bowl. That was great. That was a good win. I'm not going to lie. Also here, Mark Ellis. The commercials are never the greatest part of the Super Bowl. The mm. game is number one. The uh, halftime show is number two. Uh, and yes, I'll clear this up right now. I threw the pass to Lady Gaga. <laughs> yeah, this, is, this is the crazy thing because that game, like, for, bear with us for just a moment for those of you who don't really care anything about sports. The actual human drama that was playing <laughs> out in that game, because you get into halftime. First of all, you have to understand the drama that the the Patriots have been through the last couple of years. They get that bullshit deflate gate nonsense. This is the most inflated ball that the yeah, Patriots have right. seen in the last two years. <laughs> that a court of law said there was no evidence they did anything wrong, but then a higher but he was court a said. Fan. But then the higher <laughs> court said, yeah, but the NFL has the right to suspend them anyway. So they do that, and everybody wanted to see if the Patriots or even people who hated the Patriots kind of wanted to see the Patriots win because they wanted to see Goodell the commissioner of the NFL, eat it and have to stand there on a platform and hand the trophy over to right. them. They did it down by 25 points with five minutes left in the third quarter. I, 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 it's, the, it's the most incredible thing I've ever seen in a championship sporting match. Like that comeback will go down. You have to understand, came back from 25 points. The previous record, the most anybody had ever come back from in a Super Bowl in history was 10 points. Done by the Redskins, Super Bowl 22. Woo Done by the Redskins. In overtime for the first time ever. <laughs> yeah, and, and the first overtime game ever, first quarterback for pretty through for 466 no. yards. I hated that it was so entertaining. Yeah, here, here's, yeah, here's what I did love about the game as a pure sports fan is that it's very rare when it is so clear in athletics that if you do this, if you accomplish this task, you get to be called the greatest of all time. And at halftime, after Brady throwing that pick six in the first half, it was like, okay, if they win this game somehow, some way, you have to say Brady's the greatest yeah. quarterback that ever lived. If they lose, we can still have the debate, and I can still be a John Elway guy. Tom Brady's the best quarterback that ever lived. Sorry, kids, it's true. Oh, so much. But it was funny because going into halftime, it looked like, and the announcer was joking about it, that the highlight of the game was going to be the Lady Gaga performance. Uh, well, I'll tell you, the, hi the highlight was the thing afterwards. Someone tweeted out, and I retweeted it, of Lady Gaga doing that jump, and then they cut to Shane McMahon falling through a table. It's hysterical. <laughs> it, it is awesome. so good. <laughs> All right, well, listen, one of the big things about the Super Bowl every year is, of course, it's become a tradition. <laughs> I just thought about it. <laughs> just like, just like, I cried watching it. It's the funniest thing ever. <laughs> is, of course, for us movie fans, the Super Bowl a few years ago became a big deal to movie fans because... The big trailers play, and a whole bunch of trailers. And this year, $5 million a minute is what the Super Bowl is charging yeah. for ads. So we got an awful lot of 30-second spots. So who's getting fired for that Spud McKenzie ad, then, if that costs And that was million. like, it felt like five minutes <laughs> long. That was like Ben-Hur. <laughs> <laughs> it was the longest trailer I've seen, yeah. So long. So, Ashley, tell us about the first trailer. Disney and Marvel Studios <laughs> unveiled the newest trailer for Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 during Super Bowl 51. Writer-director James Gunn returns to write and direct the highly anticipated follow-up, which finds the Guardians on another mission revolving around the search for Peter Quill's true father, played by Kurt Russell. While the spot debuted a lot of unseen footage, the main line of the trailer seems to be about Mantis, Yondu, and Nebula officially becoming a part of the crew. Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 opens in theaters on May 5th. John, what do you think of the extended Super Bowl spot for Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2? It was really good. It was an excellent, excellent spot. Um, <laughs> but highlighted, of course, as I don't know, it seems like the entire marketing campaign for the new Guardians is all about Drax. Because it, right. and the timing of it and the way Gunn, James Gunn, uh, so beautifully edits it, and that, that boom, 
Look out! I <laughs> cracked up. I was here watching the Super Bowl with everybody, and I just cracked up. He goes, I tried. It, and he seems to be, whether it's that moment or the one moment from the previous trailer about your deepest start to stream, do me, do me. I, he seems to be the, the focus of it. Uh, look, I don't know that I could be any more excited for this Guardians of the Galaxy movie. It looks incredible in this trailer, fed everything that I was looking for. What did you think about yeah, it? Yeah, we also got a lot of Baby Groot, though, and getting to see yes. Baby Groot in action, actually be a part of the team, kicking some ass. Rocket Raccoon, of course, is going to be shooting a lot of guns. I like the addition of Nebula and Mantis to the forefront in this trailer, anyway, and the extended spot that was on, like, get that crap out of there. <laughs> I thought it was a really good way to kick off the Super Bowl, because if you're watching the game, this was right before kickoff, and it was just a nice, positive energy trailer. It's what we expect to see from Guardians of the Galaxy 2. It was, I, I, I'm not a huge fan. I like Fleetwood Mac a lot. Using the chain in that trailer, I'm like, I wanted something that was a little more rocking, but okay. Jeremy. I want to rock and roll all night. <laughs> that would have been, <laughs> that would have been, that would have been your, yeah, it was, uh, it was like you said, right before kickoff. So it got you kind of jacked up for it. Uh, the, the, the thing I love is the fact that they're ultimately doing what you knew they were going to do. So you have these villains who are kind of on the fringe, but they're kind of linked to some of the characters. You're like, are they going to have them join the crew in the next one? In the extended trailer, uh, Rocket, actually, he's because uh, Baby Groot says, I am Groot. Mm -hmm. And then Rocket's like, he just said, welcome to the freaking Guardians of the Galaxy. And then just shows the title. And he's like, but he didn't say freaking. And then it ends. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I mean, the extended trailers are actually the coolest. But mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I, I'm glad to, I, I want to look for, I'm looking forward to seeing where they, these anti-heroes go when they team up with the Guardians of the Galaxy because there's, there's an axe to grind with these people, so I'm interested as to why they have to do that. I think it's fun also just because they're essentially all anti-heroes. Right, you know? right, kind yeah, of. But yeah, but, but no, like I know what you're saying, but I just, that's kind of started out as anti-heroes, mm -hmm. all of them. Um, I loved it, man, and I, I, I think out of everybody here on this table that I, I definitely liked Guardians of the Galaxy, the first one. I liked it. I didn't love it as much as everyone else did, but I am so excited for this movie. I think that this, what it did do, all the things that I did love about the first movie, it's showing me they're capitalizing off of that. They're doing more. It, it, Chris Pratt said it in one of his interviews that it's going to be more epic. Everything we've seen so far looks more epic. Um, I think that this is going to, it's just going to play more into the lore. It's going to play more into everything that we've liked so far in this. And, I, and for for me, science fiction kind of fantasy fi space epics, like that's exactly what I love, obviously. And to see that in the Marvel universe and what they're doing here, yeah, it's, I love it. So let me ask you guys a couple questions. Number one, mm. there are rumors mm -hmm. <clears throat> that Doctor Strange may make an appearance in Guardians of the Galaxy. Makes so sense. let me throw an over-under at you. Over-under 35% that Doctor Strange actually makes an appearance in Guardians of the oh. Galaxy 2. Mark, over-under 35%. Are we counting post-credits? Counting post credits. Counting post credits, yeah, I like that because it's a nice conduit from, because we know he's going to be in Thor Ragnarok, and that's not going to be a surprise anymore, which is actually why I would think it, the, it would be under 35%, because they want to save him to be, oh, cool, Doctor Strange is in Thor Ragnarok, but as far as a post credit scene goes, we're counting that, I think it's way over 35%. Jeremy? Yeah, over 35%. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if Doctor Strange is the new Stan Lee. It's like Stan Lee and Doctor <laughs> Strange, cameo and everything now. I think he'll be in it. Post credits over, yeah. I'm still going to take the under. I think it's possible I'm still taking the under. But now another thing is, we've, James Gunn has said, he's definitively said, Thanos does not make an appearance right. in Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah. Now, sometimes directors have been known to try to give a little misinformation to throw he's the not audience off the set. So let me ask you this. <laughs> over under 15%. Over or under 15% the chances that Thanos does show up in Guardians of the Galaxy 2? Under. I take James Gunn and his word when it comes to this stuff, though. I don't think he's J.J. Abrams than us. Jeremy? I'd say under also just because the last time we saw him, he gets the glove. He's like, fine, I'll do it myself. So whatever he's doing, he's on the path mm -hmm. to it. And if it's going to be in anything, it'll be in Thor Ragnarok. If we're counting post credit scenes, then I'm going to go over. Not by much. I think he's going to be like Chris Hogan in the first half. You, you know he's there. <laughs> you just don't see him a lot. Yeah, I'm going to take the under as well. I believe James Gunn. He, d he doesn't seem to like to play those. Game so, but who knows? He surprised us before. All right, what's next? The first full trailer for Pirates of the Caribbean: Dead Men Tell No Tales aired during the big game, and it finally showed off what we can expect to see from the fifth movie in the franchise. Direc directed by con tiki filmmaker Joachim Roning and Espen Sandberg, the movie is written by Catch Me If You Can's Jeff Nathanson and finds Johnny Depp's Captain Jack Sparrow being hunted by the deadly ghost Captain Salazar Javier Bardem, who escapes from the Devil's Triangle with. 
revenge on his mind. Jack's only hope is to find the legendary trident of Poseidon, so he enlists the help of an astronomer and a young sailor for his crest. The film opens on the in theaters on May 26th. Jeremy, thoughts on the first full trailer for Pirates of the Caribbean, Dead Men Tell No Tales? All right, I hadn't heard the breakdown of the plot until you just broke it down, and this got to be the most <laughs> absurd roundtable I've ever heard in my life. Like, all right, guys, next Pirates of the Caribbean. There are ghosts in the water. I know we've seen them before, but they're looking for Jack Sparrow. I know we've seen that before, but Jack Sparrow's looking for the trident of Poseidon. So it's just that that's out of control. Uh, the trailer itself I'm interested in, but it hasn't sold me because there's been one great Pirates of the Caribbean movie, um, a couple of crappy ones and a serviceable one. So it, it's I, it needs more to bring me on its side. I think Javier Bardem will be good in it. But I want to know why it's, all right, ghosts are taking over the ocean. The thing that intrigues me is what I can hypothesize in my mind that I have no evidence that they're actually going to go that route. But I feel like if ghosts are in the ocean and the, these ghost pirates are, you know, being dicks, then you have to think that uh, Will Turner sucks at his job because he's flying, he's the Dutchman guy, you know, he, he's ferrying ghosts over to the other side. If these guys are still here, then he's not doing good at his job. We see him in the trailer, so maybe they're incorporating him in with it. He's got the seashells on his face, so you know maybe he's going down the dark path. I don't know, uh, but I'm, I'm interested. It, it, it looks like a big movie, but I, I can't lose my mind over this, man. Christian. <sighs> right. Boring. Uh, it looks exactly like every other of the bad ones that have been out the two, the three, the fours, it looks like the same thing. I think the CGI looks like crap. I know everyone else thought it looked great. I think it looks so noticeable. It looks like, it looks bad. And I, and you're mentioning Orlando Bloom. Was there an extended spot also or something for this thing? No, it's like okay. a quick blip. He's I mean, in it for a second. Yeah. Why would you not market him if he hasn't been back? He's in it for a quick second. I think they'll probably do it later on, but do it now. It's Super Bowl. <laughs> you, you put, show your, show him that it's going to tie in the first one, the only good one. Show him. I, I, there was nothing in it that made me go, well, this one could be good. Yeah, I'm bored. I think they life. marketed the right guy they had to, and that was Johnny Depp. Whether I don't know they what he's covered. him every in. time. But, he's co but we didn't see him in that no, first we, trailer. He wasn't in the first trailer. No, 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 I was only in this much of this Jack trailer. Sparrow, so the, we didn't the campaign see for him. every other movie, though. I just love that he's covered it. I don't know what that is. Is that mud? Is that poo? Is that Alice in Wonderland reviews? I don't know what it is, but he's clearly <laughs> dirty from head to toe. And to answer Jeremy's question, well, most ghost pirates are usually dicks. Like, you don't see a lot of them working down to St. Jude's. They're yeah. usually <laughs> assholes. Yeah. So you're going to deal with a lot of that. And I like this trailer. A lot of it has to do with the fact that I'm so sold on Javier Bardem as this evil ghost pirate. I think he looks so menacing, so scary. I am kind of excited to see this movie a lot because that first trailer, but also this spot, I think adjudicated itself very well. Look, I, I the first Pirates of the Caribbean surprised me mm -hmm. because it's, wait a minute, it's a movie based on a Disneyland ride? That's one of the stupidest things I've ever heard. The movie was awesome. It's incredible. And everything else has been shit. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, let's not pull punches. I thought the last one was probably the most watchable of the sequels. But do you remember anything about it? Mermaids? No. no. I mean, they've been <laughs> dreadful. I mean, they, I mean, seriously, Disney, which is a company that pretty much, that has come to pretty much knock it out of the park almost every time they step to the plate, whether it's their live action stuff, animation, their sub companies, whatever, <laughs> Pirates of the Caribbean have been shit. And I wasn't thrilled with the first trailer. I liked the first trailer just because, you know, we had Salazar there. It looked really, it looked pretty interesting. I I'll tell you what, I thought this trailer was great. I thought it was a great trailer. I thought it, it felt engaging. It felt exciting. I was wondering, like, you're two trailers in now and you're still only giving us this much Johnny Depp who is the Captain Jack Sparrow is the draw of the franchise, and the reason why, despite being total crap, the franchise continues to make a billion dollars every time it comes out. But I'm not drinking the Kool Aid. Mm -hmm. the, the trailer was great, but I think we've got a, a transformer situation here where you just <laughs> you've made me buy in too many times and then disappointed me with this franchise. So while I'm giving you your due, the trailer was great. It was great. But I still don't believe this movie is going to be watchable. I still don't believe this movie is going to be any good. I really hope I'm wrong. I just don't see it happening. But they got Johnny Cash music, John. That <laughs> always works for trailers. That's the new trend this year. <laughs> right. Play Johnny Cash. That did bug trailers. me about most yeah. of these trailers. That's why the one thing I will say about the utilization of Fleetwood Mac and Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2's trailer is that it wasn't that I'm so sick of this slow, drawn out music with these shots. Well, the Logan trailer did it great. We don't need that in every trailer, guys. Yeah, it's happening in trailers now because the Log uh, Logan trailer yeah, did it great. You know so. they were like, all right, guys, Logan Crush. So we're going to, yeah. whatever you'll soundtrack never, we had, John. You'll never 
convinced me that before the Logan trailer came out that they had already planned to use a Johnny right. Cash. Right. There's right. no way. Right. And I, I don't know, maybe most people dug it. I mean, who knows? All right, what's next? It's Monday, which means it's time for the weekend box office report. M. Night Shyamalan's Split took the number one spot for a third weekend in a row with a 14.6 million haul, pushing its domestic total to 98.7 million. <clears throat> Marking the first time a Shyamalan film topped the weekend box office three weeks in a row since 1999's The Sixth Sense. Finishing in the number two spot was Paramount's Rings. The third film in the Rings franchise opened with 13 million domestic and another 15.2 million internationally for a 28.2 million worldwide debut. A Dog's Purpose finished in the number three spot with 10.8 million, while Hidden Figures continued to impress, bringing in 10 million for the number four spot, coming just shy of 120 million domestic. And at number five is La La Land. The Oscar favorite took in 7.45 million domestic, with a domestic total hitting 120 million. Mark, thoughts on the weekend box office? I was one of those that contributed box office to Split again this week, and I got to see it again. It's just as good as what I remembered from seeing it the first time a couple months ago at AFI. And the thing that strikes me the most about this week's box office, besides the success of Shyamalan and what that means for the future of his movies, let's keep it small budget, is that Hidden Figures is actually on pace to defeat La La Land in domestic box office total. They're yeah. neck and neck, but Hidden Figures did a little bit better than La La Land, and it's about a million or two million dollars north of La La Land for overall domestic box office. So you can have your 14 Oscar nominations. People want to see a crowd-pleasing movie, so that and Hidden Figures together, it's really nice to see people go to the movies and want to get cheered up. It's a crazy world we live in right now, but you got La La Land, and you got Hidden Figures, and Rings is probably going to make its budget back. If anything, this weekend's box office report definitively answers the question about why do all these Oscar contending films come out in December and January and we've always said it's because of that Oscar buzz. Do you think for a second a film, just look at it on its outside, that a film like Hidden Figures is going to make a hundred plus million dollars at the domestic box office? Right. You think a musical called La La Land is going to make a hundred million dollars? Do you think Lion is going to make more than five million bucks? Mm -hmm. No. But they release them at this time of year because propelled by the Oscar buzz, you get hidden figures that's now like over $120 million domestically. Which, by the way, if you have not seen hidden figures, go see it. You know what? I watched it again the other night, and I thought, you know what I didn't realize the first time I saw it? How good? Is it still bouncing? I you love it. It's smacking off my head? you in the head. <laughs> <laughs> was, um, you need to deflate the ball a little bit? Was, um, <laughs> Paul Kent, the Paul Kent. Uh, in their uh, Dances with Wolves. Mr. D uh, he's Pa Kent. Uh, <laughs> Dances with Wolves guy. I, I, the more I watch that movie, I think, you know what? He probably could have gotten a Best Supporting Actor nomination for that as well. I thought he was worth The movie is amazing. La La Land, that movie never would have made this kind of money. It, and so it's kind of interesting to see that. Woo, space between us. Oh, yeah. Bye-bye. Woo. Yeah. <laughs> That's, is, that, is, is that the smell oh, what, of the movie? Or the... $3 million it made in its opening weekend. Well, $3.8 million came in at number nine. Uh, and it's know. opening weekend. Uh, Behind <laughs> Resident Evil, which is finally we can put the rest of this nonsense. Yeah, Resident Evil may suck, but at least it makes money at the box office. Not anymore. Uh, uh, yeah, so that thing is tanking a lot. But hey, you know what? No matter what Sham Hammer has been through and what he has done, I like the idea that no matter what your track record is, if you put turn out a good effort, that you'll get rewarded for it. Splits a good effort, and he's getting rewarded for it, and it's nice to see. Jeremy? Yeah, when I was watching Rings this past weekend, I was like, America has one job to do, friends, and that is to not let Rings beat Split in the box office. And Split <laughs> was still number one. That makes me a very happy person. Did you see Shyamalan's tweet this no, past I didn't. weekend? He says something like uh, something. he finished his script. Or no, he has like a 10-page outline for his next movie. And he's like, and if you've seen Split, and it was just dot, dot, dot. And so people were like, what? That's so awesome. he's going in the directions that we want him to go. <laughs> That's fantastic. Um, yeah, A Dog's Purpose. People are like, why haven't you seen A Dog's Purpose? The fact is, because I love myself way too much, and I don't want to watch a dog die seven times. It is that simple, folks. I don't need it. <laughs> I'm really glad that Hidden Figures is holding on there. Um, Rings, eh, I didn't hate Rings. I'm not surprised it's in number two. I'm not surprised it's in the top five. I'm a little like, I would have liked Hidden Figures or something to be above it, but we, we knew that was going to be big. That's why the only job was for uh, Split to beat it. Split beat it. I'm glad Split's doing his thing. I'm glad Shyamalan might be coming back. Here's hoping. You know what's funny about Split? Uh, this is his third week, right? Yeah. John, when we talked about Split initially, we I think that we were going to be happy if it made 15 its opening weekend. Yeah. And and here we are 
week three, and it did it. And I was after seeing the movie the first time, I was so I was just wanting everyone to go out and check it out, and they have been. So I'm glad and it set some kind of record as far as horror movies go. I can't remember what the stat is I saw this morning, but. Um, I think that everyone that wanted to see Rings saw it, and you're going to see a big drop-off next week on that film. Hidden Figures and La La Land are the two that I absolutely um, am glad. It, it makes total sense that this is where you put them in. This is the American Sniper thing, the same thing that they did. It builds up the, the momentum in January, and the fact that both of those movies, people are seeing them. I mean, it's, it's good for movies in general, and, and, but once we, we're, cause we're getting into February and March here, the blockbusters are going to start coming out here, the bigger movies from February and March, the bigger studio budget movies and a lot of these movies are going to kind of start to fall off. Um, but that Mars stink, stinker that I just saw the other day, um, who is that movie made for? I mean, that's the, it was it was like a Disney TV movie for young lovers. It, but but I can't I don't understand. I was watching that movie and I don't understand why that thing got greenlit. Like who they thought would actually go and pay money to see it. It's not because it's so terrible. It's just it's dull. There's nothing to it. There's no box office appeal for it to spend that kind of money on it. I mean, it's not that it was so much, but still, to make three million dollars, that's a big loss. So yeah. I don't, I don't understand why that movie was made in the first place. Now that that is the bigger question. The, the question you raised is the one that I had been asking. Who was this movie made for? Right. Who, who are the marketing geniuses behind that one? Yeah. Who was <laughs> your audience? Right. You know what? Right from the get-go, who were you going after? And it was and it supposed to like... come out in August of last year. <laughs> Yeah, well, it and certainly then, wasn't for the for right. the summer audiences. But one inter this is a really interesting uh, trivia question for for you guys at home. See if you can find answers. I do not know what the answer to this is. Split has now finished number one at the box office three consecutive weeks. All right, in, for its first three weeks, and it has still not cracked a hundred million dollars domestically. Wow. I would be curious if you guys who are trivia nuts at home. I would love for you to look this up and put it in the comment section. Has that ever happened before? Mm. Has there ever been a case in box office history where a film has been number one at the box office for three consecutive weeks and not yet cracked a hundred million? Now it's at Joe like, Dirt, maybe it's at like ninety-eight million dollars. <laughs> it's going to crack a hundred million, but as of the three weeks, still not cracked it. If you know what the answer to that is, I would love it if you guys can look that up. That would be great. Here's going to be the big game this weekend, too, is that you got split and hidden figures. Which one of them is going to come in at number four? So I think it's going to be one of those. you got Batman Lego movie, you have John Wick 2, and you have Fifty Shades Darker. I think Batman is going to take number one, but that's going to be a really fun top five pick. Yeah. Uh, I'm it's, it hurts me to say it, but it's... Hard to count out Fifty Shades. I man. think it's number two. I think I think that after the buzz of Batman, um, that, that it's, it really is. There's you look at that. Batman's that, so great. Mm -hmm. yeah, but not only that, it is great. But you look at the list right now. There are no besides Dog's Purpose, and that's not even a kids movie. You look at those five movies up there. There's nothing for children right now. Sure, there is. There's that Mars movie. <laughs> right, right, if you want him to go to bed early. Um, but I think Batman's number one with Fifty Shades coming in two, and then hopefully John Wick is at three. Mm -hmm. Well, and, and by the way, I mean, since we we're talking about. It, by all means, I put my review up uh, this weekend of the Batman Lego movie. Check that out. A, a little spoiler. It's outstanding. It's, a, it's an outstanding film. You want to check that out. All right, guys. We've reached that part of the show now for Buy or Sell. Here's how this works. In front of her, Ash, she's got a few other movie trailers from the Super Bowl in front of her. She's going to run them down, and those of us at the table are simply going to say whether we buy it or sell it. So, Ashley, what do we got? For the Super Bowl, 20th Century Fox reveals a brand new TV spot for Logan. Hugh Jackman returns one last time to play Wolverine, reuniting with the Wolverine director, James Mangold, utilizing another haunting slow song with Amazing Grace. The bittersweet tone of the trailer showed a bit more action with X-23 and the state of mind we find Patrick Stewart's Professor X. Logan is set to hit theaters in less than one month on March 3rd. Christian, buy or sell the new TV spot for Logan. I buy it. It's, not, it's, it's nothing that has added to my excitement or taken away, for that matter. It's, it's, I'm very excited to see this movie in general. It is the same tone that they've been setting so far. I think that I didn't learn too much about the story that I didn't already know, and that's good. I don't want to see anymore. We're too close at this point. So it was fine. It did exactly what I needed it to do. Bye. Jeremy. Um, I'd actually sell the TV spot just okay. because it showed me nothing new. I was like, it's 30 seconds. It's basically a condensed version of the trailer I already saw with Amazing Grace playing. However, there were there was another trailer that Two played at the yep. end of the game that did show me some new stuff, so I'm going to buy that. Uh, but yeah, it, the, the first one, didn't. it just didn't show me anything new, but the second one did. 
Mark. That's a huge buy for me. I thought it was great. I mean, again, like, like we loved that initial Logan trailer so much, and it didn't show us a lot of new footage. But as a 30-second TV spot that's showing a Super Bowl audience, hey, we have a Logan movie coming out, and it's very different than any other comic book movie you're going to see, any other Wolverine movie you're going to see, I think it was a soaring triumph. I also like seeing the brief shot of Steven Merchant. I think yeah. that was really cool. It added a new layer to this for me. This trailer is 90% Brett Favre when he played for the Vikings, and it's 10% Viagra commercial. Because doesn't Logan kind of look like the guy is just going to go throw a football through a tire and just like give it one more shot, and I think it's going to come through for him. Yeah, he says you want to be ready to perform when that special time comes around. Um, if your claws are out for more than four hours, see a doctor. Um, you know what? I would have sold, that because you're right, the second trailer was better. I would have sold the first trailer. I was ready to sell the first trailer because exactly like you. We've seen all of this before, but then I remembered, this is playing for an audience at the yeah. Super Bowl who a lot of them may not be predisposed to watching a Logan movie, or even know what Logan is, and then in, so then I kind of readjusted my my goggles, if you will, looking at it and thought it was an effective thirty second spot, it, and it's hard to take yourself out of it because I've already seen the spot. But for somebody who hadn't, who may not even know that another Wolverine movie is coming, it was an effective spot. So I I do buy it on that level. But I was really happy to see near the end of the game that second trailer came gave us those of us who do know a new L Logan movie is coming a little extra something. So it was nice to see. So overall, I'm gonna buy yeah, it. Yeah, it was like here, nerds. Here's the new stuff. <laughs> oh, thanks. But man, that was another 2.5 mil they had to mm -hmm. put up for that. So yeah, thank you for way. for uh, for servicing us, nerds. All right, what's next? No Super Bowl is complete without an outlandish new trailer for the new <laughs> Fast and Furious movie. Universal <laughs> Pictures unveiled a new look at the fate of the Furious during the big game with a preview of director F. Gary Gray's take on the franchise. The eighth installment in the long-running series finds Vin Diesel's Dom teaming up with a villainous character played by Charlize Theron to sabotage his old crew and turn his back on his family. The film also stars Dwayne Johnson, Jason Statham, Michelle Rodriguez, Tyrese Gibson, and Kurt Russell, and opens in theaters on April 14th. John, buy or sell the new TV spot for Fate of the Furious. Ah, buy it. I, I mean, look, I'm a huge Jason Statham fan. I am a big The Rock fan. I really, when, when the last... Furious movie ended, and it was the two of them facing off. I wanted to see them come back. Now, granted, I also really want to see Statham's younger brother, Gaston, come back as well, just because he's still alive. They're both in that prison. I want to see Statham and him side by side fight. I think that would be cool. It, again, it's a nice spot, high energy spot. How good will the movie be? I'm not so sure. But for, as far as the spot goes, I buy it. Christian? I'm going to buy it also. And I've been a fan of, of last from F F Fast and Furious 5 up until now. And I didn't like the first trailer. I thought the amnesia storyline or whatever they were going with it looked really, really dumb and desperate. And it might still be once we see the movie. But I thought this trailer gave me more of that feel of the over-the-top dumb action that I want to see from the movie and staying away from the shark repellent. Um, I think that this actually looks like a movie that I'm going to just shove a bunch of popcorn in my face and watch it. I think that I'm probably still going to steal one of the words I hate on the internet, cringe, when I see this, uh, this storyline kind of unfold. But I didn't see it in the Super Bowl trailer, so I'm buying it. Yeah. I'll give it a buy because I was concerned for the same reason as you that we saw that first trailer and how are they going to cram two minutes and 30 seconds worth of pure idiocy into a much smaller Super Bowl spot and there's dumb things in the trailer for sure. They they touch on the amnesia a little bit. They always oh, turn his back on his family but they showed all the stars in the movie. You got a great scene between The Rock and Jason Statham looking at each other and only Snake Plissken can keep them away from each other. So it did what it has to do. Does this movie look stupid as hell? Yeah, but it also looks really, really fun, so I'm going to give it a buy. I also love how, unforg how forgiving everybody is of everything that's happened in the past, because you look at how I many times like Statham's trying to kill people, and then The Rock and Vin Diesel try to kill each other, and now it's like, it, they don't care. Like, the <laughs> past doesn't matter. Because when Kurt Russell's in a room, you do what he tells True. you to do. You know why? It's because they're like, wait, in Guardians of the Galaxy, the anti-heroes and the villains team up with the good guys, that's what we're going to do right. here, because that's, that's sequel 101 right there. I buy it for sure, because it's fun, it's dopey fun, it's the right kind of fun. As for the amnesia thing, didn't Michelle Rodriguez character do the same thing. She had amnesia, so she was kind of bad. She got like, then, hit in the head really hard. Yeah, so yeah, I yeah, gotta yeah. think they're not gonna do the exact same thing no, 
don't again? think amnesia so, is no, no, it has to be probably something got a chip else. or something or yeah. he, or, he's, or some kind of bribe. Something yeah. Dumb. Or or he's like, oh, I'm going after a bigger fish that I couldn't tell you about, right. and I'll, I'll fill you in later. Uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, this is ridiculous stuff. But it's like the old James Bonds. Like it's just re- it, this stuff is physically impossible to do. But uh, you, you have some popcorn, you have a good time. It's like the Goldilocks zone of fun and nonsense that Transformers always tries to hit but never does. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what's next? Paramount Pictures trailer for Transformers The Last Night hit during the first half of the game, with Michael Bay himself also sharing an extended look at the film from his Facebook and Twitter accounts. The movie finds Mark Wahlberg reprising his role as Kate Yeager from Age of Extinction in a film that introduces a new mythology involving King Arthur, Nazis, and time travel, all centering around Woo-hoo! Optimus Prime returning to Earth. <laughs> The movie also stars Laura Haddock, Stanley Tucci, Anthony Hopkins, John Goodman, and John Turturro, and Josh, du- Josh Dumel. It opens in theaters on June 23rd. Christian, buy or sell the extended trailer for Transformers last night. I'm not getting fooled this time. I'm selling it. Because I'm not, I'm not getting fooled. Because there's, there's just, it's the same. If you look at every other Transformers trailer that has been out before with the slow motion and not showing you any of the dopey humor that we're going to get in this movie, but they, they, they take it out because they don't want to show you that to make you go, I don't know. It, it does, it, it looks, and then when you hear Ashley Reed, time travel, King Arthur, and Nazis, it's like, is this a Saturday Night Live sketch? What the hell's going on? <laughs> um, but this particular trailer, it just looks like a Michael Bay trailer. It looks like blo- things blowing up, Transformers fighting, and there's nothing to it that makes me go, this one could be different. It's the same stuff. They got you. Oh, cool it, though. No. Oh, they didn't get you? Right. No. I mean, look. Welcome I, to the real yeah. world. I, I, I Look, I have been fully anticipating that, A, the next Transformers movie would be bad, and then B, but I'm going to love the trailers because all Transformers movie trailers are great. And then that last Transformers movie trailer came out. It was bad. It's a bad trailer. This came out. It's a bad. It's a bad trailer. This sounds like Tropic Thunder fake trailer yeah. kind of nonsense. I mean... Now watch this be the greatest one they've ever done. But and, and that's fine. Hey, look and look. We're, we can't judge the movie. We have not seen the movie. I hope it is. Yeah, we're gonna I want go, a good Transformers movie. We're all gonna go into the theater hoping for something awesome and being willing for it to be awesome. But this sounds like shit. This sounds terrible, and it looks terrible. And no, I have no faith left in this franchise. And so and look, Michael Bay should have left this thing a long time ago. I'm still I'm still a guy that I think Michael Bay can be a talented director, mm. and he cranks out some good films here and there. But he should have been off the Transformers series a long time ago. He's showing when he does stuff, because I didn't necessarily love Pain and Gain, but it is a better movie for what like he Pain does. And, and, and a lot of people did. And obviously, with, with, what's the movie you love? 13 love? Hours. 13 yeah. Hours. Movie last and year. still, those are the movies that I think he should be doing, because what is the point of the writer's room if you're going to do the same movie anyway, thanks for spending all that time, and we paid you guys all that money, but I'm going to do the same thing that I've been doing over the last, like, 10 years. I don't understand it. Yeah, no, I, I feel like you're seeing the world through the, uh, through the goggles <laughs> that everyone has, fi- have, has been seeing for years. Pill. You're like, what? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's what you think. You're like, why, oh, why didn't I take the blue pill? I could have stayed in Wonderland. You took Morpheus' red pill. This is the world. You've, wo- you've woken up in some sort of sludge bath. There are monsters. <laughs> there are robots. You see, you see the human race energizing Michael Bay's, fe- like, the 10,000 BTUs of energy. It's, we're in the Matrix, folks, and John Campia has entered the real world. No, I, I, I stepped off Transformers a while ago. The only thing I look forward to now is knowing that my review is probably going to be fun. And thank you, Michael Bay, for starting my YouTube career from your garbage. (laughs) You know, team, uh, The Who is one of the legendary bands of all time, and the crown jewel of their discography is 8 minutes and 32 seconds of rock majesty called Won't Get Fooled Again. I'm going to take those lyrics... I'm going to ball them up, and I'm going to throw them, because I love this trailer. I am (laughs) buying this trailer, man. This was awesome. I love getting to see Optimus Prime pissed off, stab Bumblebee. What's he doing that for? Is he dating Charlize Theron from Fate of the Furious as well? Did he get the chip implanted in him? Anthony Hopkins telling us about redemption. I love that the trailer kind of owned up to the fact that, hey, we're sorry that the last movies have sucked, but now we're going to redeem ourselves, just like Optimus Prime is going to redeem himself. Is this movie going to be great? No, no, it's not. But I love this trailer, and it gave me the false confidence I wanted in Transformers. The last <laughs> night, we salute you, King Arthur. You're and if such you also, a sweet If kid. you also don't know, Mark Ellis also blew his college tuition on the Home Shopping Network. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'll tell you exactly There's why. There's only four left. I have to get it now. Optimus Prime stabs Bumblebee because they were sitting around. They're like, all right, guys, we can get 25% of that table right there. Just have him stabbing. 25%, one-fourth of those guys. 
be on the side. Mark, right. you're a sweet human being. I Take love you. Take my money. Right. You got right. physically ill the last time you saw of Transformers. <laughs> I, I, I got made physically ill, yeah, yeah, and I'm going to be physically ill again. You know why? Three large corns, Transformers, <laughs> the last night. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I know I've told this story before, but you know the last Transformers movie that came out, we had all bought into the trailers. We thought, this is the one. This is right. going to turn this shit back around. This is going to be great. So much so that we got like nine of us together. <laughs> this is when our offices were still at the AMC Burbank 16. So we got like nine of us together. We all went to go watch Transformers opening night together because we were all planning to go down into the studio as soon as it was done and do our review because we were so excited about it. And we all came out and we're standing around in the foyer just looking at each other. It's like, we, we, we can't we can't talk about this movie. <laughs> I uh, like we were all just so stunned, like deer in headlights, of how epically bad the last movie was. But it looks so good. Okay, anyway, what's next? Ghosts in the Shell aired its extended TV spot during the big game, showing off even more from the adaptation of the popular manga. Paramount Pictures released the commercial with new glimpses from some fan favorite characters in action that especially showed off more from Johansson's major character. The movie is directed by Snow White and the Huntsman's Rupert Sanders and arrives in theaters on March 31st. Jeremy, buy yourself the Super Bowl spot for Ghosts in the Shell. I'm going to buy it out of curiosity's sake just because I, I don't know much about Ghost in the Shell. One thing I know about Ghost in the Shell is there was a PlayStation magazine that came with demo discs. Number one, which I got, had Ghost in the Shell on the cover. I was like, that looks neat. I guess I'll get that issue. That's it. That's what I know about Ghost in the Shell. I should know more, but I don't. So in that, I feel like the trailer is fan service for people who know what they're looking at. Like Fans will be like, oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. For me, I'm not looking at it through those goggles. I'm looking at it through Mark Ellis's Michael Bay goggles over there. I, I, I want to like it, though. Uh, but it does look look like a fascinating world, but it is a coin flip as to whether or not it's going to pay off. Um, me being an optimist, if it's 50-50, I'll go on the good, so I'm looking forward to it, so I will buy it, but I am cautiously optimistic because I, I, I don't want a... What was that... Uh, that, I, Aeon that Flux. Jupiter, yeah, Aeon Flux Aeon or Flux. Jupiter <laughs> ascending. Or, I, just, I don't want that scenario, so hopefully this is a good one. Christian. I'm going to buy it. I, I'm getting pretty excited for this movie. I think that um, there's definitely some, some things working against it, but for the most part, the things that I've seen in the trailer... I've liked, and mm. to go off where you said, I'm curious about it. I want to see. I think that this. I know that obviously it's very popular. It, it, the, the people anime anime that people have gotten behind, but we haven't. It is still original as far as never been done on screen before. It's never. I mean, they've wanted, they've talked about it, and now that they're doing it, and I think that it was popular for a reason. But so is Anne Flux. Um, but I want. But I think that this is going to be something different. I'm, I'm hoping. I don't want it to be another Lucy. Is another thing right. too. But I don't think we're going to get that. I think that there's something about it that I, I hope that it could be the next Matrix and not the next Lucy. Mm -hmm. We'll see if that's the case. But I like what I've seen so far, so I'm going to buy it. You know, I was not all that impressed with the first couple of spots that came out for it. Like I know what property it's coming from, and I know that I'm looking forward to seeing that. But as far as the spots we've seen so far, has been. Image, 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 right. completely disconnected from anything you're seeing. And I just can't get excited, even though I'm excited for the property, just because I know it's their properties. As trailers, I think they failed. I like the, the, what I saw last night. I really mm -hmm. did. This was the first one from this upcoming project that I got excited about. Now, I, I got to admit, the fact that Rupert Sanders is directing it is still tempering me getting too excited about it. I really hope he can do something special with it. But I got to call like I see it. I thought it was a really damn good trailer, so I buy it. Yeah, I, I guess I'll give it a buy. If we're sticking with Who songs, this is a Who Are You? Because I really have no idea what this movie's about. I'm not familiar with the anime property at all. I know that people are hardcore fans of it. The trailers seem to please that demographic so far of people that really ha are invested in mythology. I still have no idea what the movie's about, but I think it was a mysterious enough trailer and visually interesting enough to where I'm like, okay, fine, I'll buy it. I'm not excited necessarily, but I'm curious. And by the way, I should let you guys know, if you're watching this a little bit later, we're going to put links in the description of this video to all the various Super Bowl spots that we're talking about so you can jump into the comment, or comment section. You can jump into the show notes and click on them to make sure you know what it is we're talking about. All right, with that out of the way... We've got another spot to talk about. Yep, and finally, Paramount released an all-new look at Baywatch during the last quarter of the big game. The film sees Mitch Buchanan, played by Dwayne The Rock Johnson, going head-to-head -head with a new recruit named Matt Brody, played by Zac Efron. When the two discover a criminal plot is in the works that is threatening their beach, they are forced to put aside their differences and work together to solve the case. The movie is directed by Horrible Bosses and Identity Thief director Seth Gordon and opens in theaters on May 26th. Mark, buy yourself the Super Bowl spot for Baywatch. 
Ah, oh, fine, I'll buy it. It's the same way I felt about the last trailer. It was like, I don't personally care about this movie at all, but it was, it had a couple of giggles. I thought there was a fun visual gag with Efron taking the thing off and having the Speedo on and The Rock chastising him for it. The movie looks okay. I think they're going clearly for that 22 Jump Street vibe, which I don't think they're going to hit it as well as either of the Jump Street movies have, but it's going to be funny enough. There's going to be some good jokes in it, I hope. So good enough for me to buy, but I'm not that thrilled. I'm going to buy it. Look, the most I think I can hope from this movie is some good, dumb laughs. That's what you're, when you're going in to watch a Baywatch movie. Of course, that's all you're looking for. And to me, the trailer seemed to be suggesting to me that it's going to deliver just that. I had some good chuckles watching it. I've been impressed with what I've seen so far. Do I think this is going to be, you know, comedy of the year? No, I don't. But it looks like something's going to end up being a good time at the theater, and that's all I can really ask for. So for me, it's a buy. Yeah, I'm buying it too, just for the fact that I, yeah, I just want some good dumb laughs. So if they go for 21 Jump Street and don't quite hit it, hopefully I still laugh. The funniest thing is watching tra these trailers and then going back to Baywatch and seeing how seriously that show took itself. Yeah. <laughs> That's the best part, is this show is like, no, 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 we're the number one show on television because there is no internet. We need to take ourselves seriously. <laughs> uh, there, I mean, I, I, I think Dwayne The Rock Johnson has great uh, comedic prowess. I think so does Zac Efron. I think they could do good taking this property and making it a comedy. Weirdest thing is when they're on the beach, is it just me that feels like the beach looks CGI, like they're on a green screen, or is it just the way it's framed up or something? I, 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 just, I don't know. I don't think they are, but there's something about the way it's framed up. I'm like, that looks like green screen. Maybe I'm just, maybe I've, I ate too many Cheetos last night. I have no idea. But they I'm do buying. have some beaches in California, I've heard. That's yeah. what I'm, dude, I know. That's why it's weird. That's have why I have to, to address it. No. Oh, all right. It's kind of like the Truman right. Show. Like, we don't actually let Jeremy go to the beach. Yes, Every time Jeremy's about to go to the beach, we're like, oh, dude, right. sorry, this thing came up. Yeah, Catch yeah. On fire. It's already been mapped. <laughs> it's done. Stay in your house. I'm with you guys. I mean, I buy it for the same reasons. I think that if they try to go for the 21, 22 Jump Street thing and they hit it, then it could be great. I, like, I, I agree with Jeremy that I think both The Rock and Zac Efron alone have good uh, comedic timing together. I think that that's what I have seen so far is I want to see how this dynamic of the team works. I'm, I'm curious about that. What... I'm concerned about is what similar to what you were concerned about, John, with uh, with um, Ghost in the Shell is the director, Seth Gordon. See, I know a lot of people around the office liked the first Horrible Bosses. I thought that that it, that it missed for me, um, and then Horrible, the, the other one, Horrible Bosses Two. No, no, no. It was the second one he did. The, Snow White the, and the Huntsman. No, nope. Oh. Uh, the, whoever, whatever, Seth Gordon, what, what, the boss, whatever the one that Mills McCarthy did. Uh, oh, the, the boss. boss? The, the boss. Yeah, whatever the hell the second movie he did. What was it? Thank you. Identity Thief stinks. Thank you, Cody. Uh, that movie. I actually didn't mind. Oh, Identity it made me. Thief. It made me angry in the theater. I started chewing the seat and spinning it on the floor. It was. It was. <laughs> wow. a, it was. It was a terrible movie. Um, and so that makes me concerned that his humor won't hit the way it does. But let's see. All right, guys. Listen, we do this show live, and as we like to do, we're going to save a few minutes at the end of the show, which we are now rapidly approaching, for your live Twitter questions. So if you're watching us live, start firing off questions to us right now. Just make sure you're following us on Twitter at Collider Video and start sending some questions in. Wendy's going to start picking some out. I also want to remind you that this past weekend we had a few videos drop. Of course, Mark Ellis and I did Mailbag on Saturday and Sunday, so we've got two episodes of that. Perry's latest episodes of Collider Behind the Scenes and Bloopers video is up there right now. You're going to want to check that out. And the newest episode of Jeremy Johns' show, <gasps> Awesome Tacular, oh, yeah. dropped. It's... I think the best one you've done so far. Yeah, it's hilarious. Down. And we've got a link to that in the uh, show notes. So if you have not seen that yet, find the link there and make sure you can go and check that out. Jeremy, is your stomach recovered? Uh 50%. My You'll, iron tummy is... Uh, yeah, I'm getting to the point where when I see real beaches, I think they're CGI, but so I'm almost <laughs> there. I'm almost there. Once you see the episode, you'll know what they're talking about. Okay, with all that out of the way, it's time for your live questions. Wendy, what have you picked out? All right, the first one, well, it comes from Giovanni Cartier because I didn't see the first 30 tweets he tweeted at me. He wants to know <laughs> what we thought of, what you guys thought of the Justice League image. Okay, so there's a new Justice League image that uh, apparently dropped. And do you have that there? I was going to bring that up. Um, it's nothing we haven't seen before. <laughs> every Justice League yeah. image is every three Justice people in fighting Every Justice League is two or three stand. of them standing yeah. side by side looking like they're ready for a fight. Okay, but take that out of it for a second. It's a, it's a good picture. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's great. I mean, Wonder Woman looks – Aquaman looks great. Cyborg looks great. I mean, it's certainly a lot better than he did in Batman v Superman. Uh, it's a great picture. If it was I, the first no one around. I ever saw, I'd be like, that's great. But like you said, it's, I've, it's, it seems to be the same 
photo that they keep releasing over and over. At least they're not in a truck this time, but I think that it, it, they look <laughs> like superheroes. That helps. You know what I really like is Cyborg. He's doing something. There's something yeah. happening with his arm. He's, actually, he's not just standing there looking pretty. Cyborg is doing some Cyborg stuff. So, like, because his suit, endless possibilities there. Can do a lot <laughs> of stuff. And so I want to know that they're going to carry that over into the movie and give me the Cyborg that I know. So it looks like from that image alone, I'm like, okay, so Cyborg's suit is actually doing some miraculous stuff. Every Justice League photo just looks like they're afraid of photographers. Like, like a, a guy <laughs> with a camera gets on set, like, wait, wait, what's this guy doing? Hide Affleck. Get rid of Cavill. Don't let him see him. It's cool, man. This is neat because they're showcasing the, the obviously Wonder Woman is front and center, but it's nice to see Aquaman and Cyborg get some pub away from the Batman and the Superman that we know are going to be in the movie somehow. I like, I like Cyborg with the mysterious yeah. blue wizard thingy. Who, who would have thought two years ago if two years ago I would say, you know, at some point coming up in 2017, I'm going to be saying the words, man, I just hope Justice League is half as good as the Lego Batman movie. <laughs> <laughs> Who would have thought? All right, what's next? Mato Filipovic writes, will Ego the Planet ever be revealed in a Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 future trailers, or would you rather see him in the cinema, cinema for the first time? I don't think they're going to reveal him. I, I think if it's the it. big, big stuff you normally would, but I think this is something they're going to keep under wraps. What do you think, Christian? Have we? It's only because of the Comic-Con stuff. Have they, have they not put him out anywhere? Has there been no, no trailers yet? No, I don't oh, think wow. so. Oh wow! I guess yeah. I mean, we, we so they, they showed a scene, I guess, of him at, at Comic Con. So I don't I don't think they're going to show that. Seen a lot of Pliskin. Yeah, I, I yeah. think if they haven't shown it yet, you you might you might get a shot, but I don't know that it's going to be combined with the reveal that this is ego. So which is smart. I mean, look, Guardians Volume Two. It has so much going for it already that it's not like, oh, let's throw Ego the Living Planet in this trailer, too, because that's going to make us another $10 million. This thing's already going to crush at the box office. You don't need to throw it in. Give us a surprise once we see the movie. Yeah, I like it when trailers, sh get, they show you something. You don't know what it is, so you can't piece it together. You have no mm -hmm. context. Then when you go back and watch the trailer, you're like, oh, that was right in front of my face. I didn't know it. It's like the, the first Abrams Star Trek movie where the guy says James T. Kirk was a great man, but that was another life. I should have immediately been like, time travel, and they're doing other things, and I didn't. It just didn't click with me so I, I i really like that when the best place to hide is right out, hide is right out mm -hmm. in front oh and before we get to the next question i forgot to mention that a little bit later today a new episode of tv talk is dropping make sure you keep your eyes open for that a little bit later all right what's next matt jung writes uh there was a distinct lack of dc comics to to spots at okay that's a weird english at the super bowl i think he means what? tv yeah oh, he, he I misspelled see. tv put tv T spots at super bowl the oh and the v are practically right next to each other it's a very <laughs> difficult thing yeah i mean huge it, typo but they're asking also if uh maybe the wb is losing faith no 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 no, no, no. look i i honestly think it this was it and this was part of the strategy and i respect the strategy the, the fact of the matter is it was really really expensive to put up an ad during the Super Bowl, really expensive. And I can't remember which filmmaker said it, but one of the directors famously said earlier this week, said, you know, the studio can either play a trailer or use that money to make an entire another movie. That was Jeff Snyder <laughs> was that Jeff talking Snyder's? about Moonlight. He's like, you can either spend $5 million on a one minute ad or you can make another Moonlight. Yeah, I, I mean, so <laughs> really, so the studio had to has to be strategic. We have certain amount of dollars because Contrary to what we think, studios are not actually made of money, and millions of dollars actually means life and death to studios sometimes and people's jobs and whatnot. So they have a certain amount of money they can use for marketing, and they got to decide what will be most effective for us. We can put it out at Super Bowl, which would have been a good move, sure, but at the same time, it's going to be put in the mix with a new Pirates trailer and a new Guardians trailer and a new Logan trailer and a new Fast and Furious trailer and a new, what all these other trailers, or do we use that money a little bit more strategically, get more out of it a little bit later? I don't think there's a wrong answer to that. I think they made a decision as far as their strategy goes, and we've got to sit back and wait to see how the plays out. I don't think it has anything to do with them not having confidence. How do you guys see it? I think it was the wrong move to not advertise Lego Batman more. Because that movie comes out this uh. weekend, and you could have thrown that, and kids watching the Super Bowl would have lost their mind seeing that trailer. I don't think you need to advertise Justice League or the you know Wonder, Wonder Woman. Woman or anything like that. Because of the point I made last week is that there's so many other ways to get your product out there in front of a lot of eyeballs with social media and YouTube. Now you don't have to throw five million dollars down the toilet if you don't want to. Some movies chose to go that route with a movie as big as Justice League or as huge as Wonder Woman. I don't think it's necessary. But the fact that Lego Batman is opening this this weekend, I think it would have been a nice shot in the arm. 
I don't think you needed it. I think that uh, for any of it, I don't think you, I think Lego Batman right now has been marketed pretty well. I think that kids know that it, that it's out there, and I think that the majority of the kids that you're aiming towards aren't necessarily watching the Super Bowl. I don't think you really. I know the the parents are obviously maybe they, they would oh I'd take my kid to see. I it think Batman weekend. could have fun with the Super Bowl. You could have, but, but like but, with but, the action going. If, if it wasn't for the how much it costs, I don't think to put five million dollars into a movie that probably didn't cost that much to make. I mean, certainly for. It's still going to cost money as far as being animated, but I think you don't need to do it. I think you could put a million of that, five million for a minute, into you know other types of advertising. But as far as DC goes, the properties, no, I think it was really smart not to advertise it because why would you do that when you could put five or ten million dollars into advertising for Wonder Woman? Wonder Woman comes out in July. Let's put yeah. the advertising yeah. in April or May. You know, like that's when you put the money into it, not now. Yeah, I think it's reverse Logan. You know, like they have the they have the Logan spot to win over people who might not know about Logan. The people like with all the DC cinematic universe turmoil they have out there, the people they need to win back and the people they need to win the faith of are not watching this. They're not Super Bowl people necessarily. And plus, yeah, the next DC movie is months out, so they're gonna take that money they could have allocated for one spot, allocated over a bunch of movies coming out around the time. I think it was a sm it was a smarter move. Well, let's also remember who had the Super Bowl last night. It was a nice hometown discount for Logan, and especially for a cure for wellness. They had like nine trailers during the Super Bowl because it's a Fox movie, so right. it's a little bit easier to advertise yeah. when Fox has the Super Bowl that year. You know, it's it, I, the reason why we have not talked about this is because this show is called Movie Talk. But there was another significant trailer that played That's oh, yeah. uh, last night, which was Stranger Things. Yeah, yeah. That was uh, uh, that was the best of the trailers, you know, I think. I really like. I, I'm not one of the people who, out of my head, loved Stranger Things. I, I thought it was good. I enjoyed it. I, I didn't think it was the greatest thing on television ever, but I thought it was good. That was a really good spot. Yeah. That was a really good spot. Yeah, I love seeing night. the kids in the Ghostbusters outfits because that means that it, this this movie is going to take place around 1984, so we're probably going to get some really good music in Stranger <laughs> Things Volume Two or Season Two, whatever it is. And I was initially like, "Why are they advertising this? Because it doesn't come out until Halloween." Then I was like, "You know what? Every Super Bowl party is going to have three people that love Stranger Things and people that don't know what it is, and those people are going to see that yeah. and convince all their friends going to go on Netflix and watch Season One of Stranger Things. That's going to get a huge." Spike this week. You know, it's funny is a lot of my uh, fans watching this are like, why is he talking about Stranger Things? He hasn't even seen it. I actually, you guys won. You got me. I binged it last oh, weekend. Oh, good man. Reviews coming soon. Loved the second tra the trailer for season two, though. It was I really neat that it called it Stranger yeah, Things two. two. It's, it's Stranger like Things two, like another. Titling. Yeah, for right. sure. Love All it. right, two more questions. All right, this one comes from Lucas, who writes, "In honor of the Super Bowl, what is the best football movie? I would say Remember the Titans." Mm. Oh man, I'm going the program. I love the program. I'm telling you, I love the program. It's love the so program. It's such an underrated football movie. It is. It, it is awesome. And and I know uh, this is Florida State. It was before I went to Florida State, but it was kind of people think that it was based off it and had similar. But the characters in that movie and James Conn as the coach. If you have never seen the program, go check it out. I love that movie. What would you say? I the, the the first the longest yard in North Dallas forty are all time classics. But I think a movie that does not succeed as a documentary because there's some fact fudging, there's some timeline shifting going on, but if you just watch it purely as an inspirational cinematic experience, there is nothing that tops Rudy. It is such a great performance by Sean Astin as Rudy Rudiger, who in real life is probably still trying to get into a Notre Dame frat party right now. Joe Montana doesn't necessarily remember who he is. I don't know if he got carried off the field in real life. He missed the tackle in real life. It doesn't matter. You watch the movie, you forget all that stuff, and I have that single tear come down my cheek every time he opens that letter and finally gets into Notre you Dame. You love bitch slapping Rudy. I love that. Look, it, the, 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 it's not real, but it's a great film. Yeah, this whole time I was looking at Harloff while you're building it up, and I was like, Rudy. <laughs> I was really saying that. Um, there, I hadn't seen this movie since theaters, but there was something about any given Sunday that was so like raw and in your face. I'd like to watch it again to see if it still holds up, because I hadn't seen it since I was like 18 years old. Uh, but uh, the one I have in my head when I think football movie was any given Sunday. Uh, you're talking about movies like um, We Are Marshall. Uh, there's a, like then you go to the classics like the whole nine yards, not the Adam Sandler version. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the where longest you talk yard. About, the whole nine yards is the uh, longest yard. Yeah. Sorry, so the whole nine yards is a, a great yeah. comedy actually yeah. with Bruce Willis. Uh, you're talking about Varsity Blues. You're talking about I actually really like the replacements. Did you yeah, see the program? Yeah, it's a good one. Yes, the, yeah. the, the, the programs where you already yeah. mentioned the program. I don't know if you uh, saw Friday Night Lights. 
uh, is also a great one. I honestly do not know what my favorite one is. I don't know. There's, there's a lot of good ones I haven't thought about. It. Tell what my favorite hockey ones are, but football ones, it's, there's a lot of really good ones. All right, last question of the day. Last one comes from Tobias, who writes, now that you've seen Lego Batman, would Chris McKay be a good fit for Flash? The, the guy who did the Lego Batman, does that make a logical transition to a live-action Flash? I'm not sure. Now, if you ask me outside of Lego Batman, if I heard tomorrow that The Flash was being directed by Chris McKay, would I be okay with that? And the answer to that is yes, I'd be okay with it. You know my philosophy on this. Just put a talented director on a film and I'm good with it. And Chris McKay would definitely be one of those things. I was nervous going into the Batman movie because... Number one, would the shtick wear off? Would it be a minion situation where the side characters in one successful movie doesn't work out so well when you try to give them their own lead? Uh, and definitely there's a shtick with the Batman, with the Lego Batman. It works great. And somehow, someway, he found a way to make it fun and exciting and funny. And I never found myself comparing it to the original Lego all the way through, throughout the film. That's a feat. So is he a talented director? Yes. So would I be okay with him directing Flash? Sure. Yeah, yeah I, I'd be good with it. Yeah, I, I just want a director at this point to look us all in the eye and be like, guys, I'm in it to win it. I'm sticking around. Oh, yeah, you were know? he to sign up? To, like, <laughs> tomorrow, if you told me he signed up, great. I then fully expect by the end of next week he'll be <laughs> right, off of it. Right, right. But, I mean, whatever. <laughs> you come out as well. All right, guys, over under 30%. <laughs> yeah. right. Would you be okay with Chris McKay keeping that director's seat warm for two weeks? <laughs> well, we joke about that, but that's that seems to be the biggest thing because I, I – if. I would take him right away because what I saw in the Batman Lego movie was someone who really understood the character. As even though it's even though it's a comedy and it's a Lego movie, the character He understood Batman. He understood yeah. Batman. He understood everything about Batman and the DC universe. So I actually would be on board for that. The question is is the team that he's working with at for, for the Lego movie the same team that he would have to be working with uh, for DC and that's not necessarily yes because different producers are assigned, uh, assigned to different movies to overlook. So and uh, I'm very curious to see what would happen down the road but I this guy gets what the DC universe is all about. Here's an interesting thing. Who, was, who were the first people lined up to direct the Flash movie? Was it McKay? It was Lord Miller. A Lord Miller, right. Of, of, right. of the Lego right, movie fame. Yeah. And so, I mean, that's it. W would you be okay with McKay? I, I would totally be okay with it. For the reason that Christian mentioned that he understands the character, and he also clearly understands Batman lore, and Lego Batman does such a brilliant job of walking that line, of winking at it and having fun with it, but never just making fun of it. Right. It laughed with everything in Batman's history, not necessarily at it. And there's been a nice trend in comic book films with people who come from a more comedic background than you would expect making great movies. Look at what the Russo brothers have been able to do. I don't know that I'm going to put that sort of pressure on him. I don't know that this guy necessarily wants to do The Flash, but if the Lego Batman movie is any indication, you can have a lot of fun with this movie. And what, what do we always say that DC seems to be wanting to do now with their movies? That they want to inject a little bit of life, a little bit of fun into this gritty universe they've built. This is a good guy to help get that jump started. One, I'm not going to say what it is, but one of my favorite lines in the entire movie, that, one of the lines that made me laugh pretty much the hardest was the password to the Batcave. I, I, I'll let you guys <laughs> see the movie that. yourself, but it was pretty damn funny. All right, guys, that'll do it for us for this installment of Movie Talk, the uh, New England Patriots celebratory uh, installment. Thank you so much for joining us. I want to thank the guys sitting here with me. First of all, over there, Mr. Christian Harloff. Christian, where can people find you online? Well, you can find me on Twitter and Instagram, at Christian Harloff. And tomorrow, we've got a big team match on the Movie Trivia Schmodown. You've got the Wolves of Steel, Mark Riley and Clark Wolf going up against Six Degrees, Brianne and Stacy. And then Friday starts title week, the Inner Geekdom Championship between Burnett and Navarro. And of course, beside him, Mr. Jeremy Johns. You can find me at Jeremy Johns on YouTube, Twitter, and the rest of the internet. And you can find my show, Awesome Tacular, on the Verizon Go 90 network. This last Friday, a new one dropped where we, we, we it's, man, I tell you, there's a lot of, there's a lot of fun. <laughs> there's a lot of pain. There's a lot of enjoyment for you. Ellis and I are still recovering. It's fantastic. <laughs> fun, pain, and enjoyment, or just another Saturday night at yeah, Jeremy yeah, Johns' apartment. Just another Friday and of Johns. of course, Mr. Mark Ellis. Uh, Shmo's No Live Show this Wednesday, 7 p.m. PST. I'll beat the ice. <laughs> House Comedy Club in Pasadena Friday and Saturday, and you can find me waiting for seven months until the Redskins begin their Super Bowl winning <laughs> campaign next September. And of course, over there we got Ashley Mova. None of you guys brought up the Water Boy for best football movie. That's oh, I meant to bring that up. I did. I think that's my favorite football <laughs> comedy. So funny. Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, Stop Ashley Mova. Fun. Happy Monday, guys. And of course, Wendy Lee. On YouTube at the Movie Couple channel and on Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat at Wendy Lee Zaney.
And you guys can follow me on social media. Follow me on Twitter or on Facebook, just at John Campy. Remember, guys, the most important part of the show is not what we have to say about these topics. It's what you have to say about these topics. Jump into the comments section. Let us know what you thought about all these trailers. And remember, take if you like this show, take it. Share it on your Facebook, Twitter. Make sure you give it a thumbs up. Click the like button and all that kind of fun stuff. Thanks a lot for joining us, guys. My name is John Campy. And until next time, bye-bye. <laughs> hey guys, if you like this video, click the thumbs up button. Also, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. It'll help you stay up to date with everything we've got going on here at Collider.